What's good YouTube, it's Mr. A, AKA Alma with the sauce. And in today's Algebra 2 video, I'm gonna be going over composition of functions, talking about the notation and just working some examples. So get your pencil, get your paper, let's get into it. All right, so first of all, what is composition of functions? So according to Webster. <clears throat> a comp composition of function is when a function whose values are found from two given functions by applying one function to an independent variable and then applying the second function to the result and whose domain consists of those values of the independent variable for which the result yielded by the first function lies in the domain of the second. Boy, if you don't get- I know, right? All right, so basically composition of functions is where you have two functions, f and g, and you know how usually when you evaluate a function, like let's say if I wanted to find f of three, you know, all you do is in f of x, wherever you see an x, you're going to replace that x with three. So just for the sake of example, it'll be like that, you know? All right. And then when you're dealing with composition of functions, it's going to look something like this. You're going to use both functions. And some people like to call it like the fog function because it does look like a little circle. By the way, this is not a multiplication. If it's a filled in dot, that's multiplied. But this means composing f onto g. And basically the way it works is you take your function f and instead of putting a number like three in the last example, you put the whole function as f's input. So basically whatever g of x is in f of x, wherever you see an x, instead of replacing that with three, you're going to replace it with g of x as a whole function. So let's see what that looks like in practice. So f of and then in parentheses we're going to put g of x which is 3x squared plus 5. so basically in my function f wherever i see an x i'm going to replace that x with 3x squared plus 5. so f is 2x minus 1 and so my x here is going to be 3 3x squared plus 5. And then you can just evaluate that. So we can just go ahead and keep doing it. Uh, if I distribute, that's going to be what? 6x squared plus 2 times 5 is 10 minus 1. So it'll just simplify to 6x squared plus 9. And that's basically it. That's compositions in a nutshell. Um, so again, you have two functions. Instead of putting a letter, as the input, you're going to put a function. So let's just do some more examples. Do wet, dry. All right, cool. All right, so I'm going to set up the new examples and then we're going to solve them. Um, <clears throat> oh, and shout out to Janiya for the problems too. Clutch. All right, let's do... Um, hmm. All right, let's do this. Let's say we have h of x equals x squared minus 2. Well, I'm so glad that went off at a time when I'm not filming for real, for real. All right, x squared minus 2. And then we'll do the other one in pink. And that'll be g of x, which is equal to 4x plus 1. All right, now we can start the, start the video back up in just a second. Hold on, let me get my marker situation situated. All right, so in this example, we have h of x, which is x squared minus two, and then g of x, which is four x plus one. And then we're asked to find h of g of x, or h composed with g of x. All right, and so remember the notation, this just means basically h of, g of x so i'm taking h of x but wherever i see an x i'm replacing that with g of x so h of x is x squared minus two but instead of x like i just said i'm replacing x with g of x so 4x plus one goes in there and then i just simplify that so uh, foil
just like that. And then first is what 4x times 4x was going to give me a 16x squared. Outside is 4x plus 1. And then the inside is another 4x plus 1. So that's just 8x. And then the last is going to give me a 1 times 1, which is 1. And then don't forget to bring down my minus 2. And right there, we're almost there. 16x squared plus 8x. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So that's basically it. And it's pretty easy. Once you get like substitution and then it's just simplify from there. All right, so this next example gives us g of x, which is 2x minus 2, and then f of x, which is x squared plus 3x. And we're asked to find g of f of negative 2. A little bit different, but same concept. We want g of, and our input is going to be f of negative 2. So we're taking g of x, and whenever we see an x, we're going to replace it with f of negative 2. My suggestion, let's figure out what f of negative 2 is first, and then whatever, whatever that is, we can just plug it into g. So f of negative 2 is what? f of x, x squared plus 3x, so I'm going to say negative 2 squared plus 3 times negative 2. All right, so that's just negative 2 squared, which is 4. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, so that's going to give us negative 2. So literally what they're asking us is now, what is g of negative 2? Because as we just saw, f of negative 2 gives us negative 2, which is kind of confusing. It just happened to be you know, like that, but all right, so now g of negative 2, we're going to plug in negative 2 wherever we see an x. So actually, hold on, let's rewind a little bit. I'm just going to write it equals. So g of negative 2 is just going to be 2 times negative 2 minus 2. Wow, that is a lot of 2s, my bad. All right, so 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Minus 2 is negative 6 is your final answer. So just because this isn't an x doesn't mean we can't do it. Same thing applies. We're just using a number in our first function, and that's it. All right, I'm going to do one last example. This, this last example, I kind of want to make it crazy a little bit. I kind of want to do the most. Oh, okay, yeah, let's do this one. I like this one. I haven't worked it out, but... It's almond with the sauce, so you know we're going to get it right. All right, so. H of G of X. So basically, same thing. Even though it looks like it's too much, it's not too much. Same thing as before. H of G of X. So we're taking our function H, and whenever we see an X, we're going to replace it with G of X. So our H of X says X cubed. So we're going to replace x with g of x, like I said, cubed plus 4. All right, so what goes in here? g of x, which is the cubed root of x minus 4. All right, uh, the thing that's nice about this problem is the cubed root of something cubed is just that something. So basically, the cubed root and the cube cancel each other out, basically. So that's really just x minus 4 plus 4 and then you know we can take out the parentheses so then we just have negative 4 plus 4 which is 0 so we're literally just left with x as our final answer so that problem it looked like we we're doing the most but it ended up being nothing so it looked like it started out doing the most but Luckily, some things canceled out and it ended up being kind of easy. So that's it. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna erase everything and do my outro and then we'll be done with my first video.